let me just introduce arvind to you you probably know his company more than him yeah uh rapido is i think a uh, rapidly becoming a household name uh, it is a household name i think for most of india and uh, uh, even for the investment community let me just tell you uh, arvind is 33 years old and he has the last valuation at least i see in the internet i i i, I may be it's around 1.1 billion dollars which is around 9000 crores so you are 33 years old and uh, you've created a 9000 crore company i mean just the i mean people are just somehow able to do one job you know and 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 get a salary and feel that's very challenging how how does that even happen how do you mentally reconcile with it does it hit you from what you told me backstage you were telling me there are 25 lakh rapido rides a day roughly right 2.5 million and you've kind of you are heading all of that how does it feel yeah uh, first of all thank you uh, thank you everybody for having me here i think i uh, if you look at our journey even i come from the background of comfortable job maybe a high paying job graduating from iit and everything was working well as per plan right but somewhere want to do something big i don't want to settle small i think that one thought made us to just go out of our comfort zone and take the first step towards doing something big doing something impactful where majority of indians can actually travel at lot more ac- accessible price affordable price and creating accessibility so i think that was a thought and it's a not it's not a journey of 1 to 2 years it's a 9 to 10 years of journey started this company 9 years back um and when we have started the transportation options we felt was not affordable and we wanted to create an affordable transportation option if you look at if you just look at what the kind of impact that we create in the country every month there are more than 20 lakh drivers who work on our platform in multiple modes of transport we are from two wheeler three wheeler to four wheeler so what makes us uh, busy at night and what makes us definitely feel motivated to do is to create employment at the scale that we are doing right now and creating local employment um, so i think that is what keeps us moving and definitely keeps us motivated especially during the tough times right i mean bike bike taxis i know many players tried and around the same time as you came most did not work i mean people said that you know it's just the economics doesn't work the bike rider driving a bike all day is much more tiring than driving a car the bike ride pays much less than a car ride pays so the a lot of companies didn't work they closed down but rapido worked and now you have gone to autos and cars and parcel deliveries all kind of things how what made rapido different yeah one of the big difference at least uh, how we started and where we stand it through even now is we we are a supply first product where we also care about the drivers we care about the captains who work on our platform and we are the only platform who don't take any commission from the drivers uh, this is a globally you don't find any platform like this where we don't take commissions and we charge a mere daily 20 to 30 rupees from a driver point of view so i think that is what changed the way this both the scale of rapido and also giving back to the society or to the captains to earn more and we made sure we worked hard for that so that still we need to run the company but at the same time we want to run the company with a very less cost and make sure that they get the most of the platform right so i think that is a big difference where we cared about the captains which are our drivers who we call uh, captains and at the same time we made they make a lot more than what we make on for every ride and that's what changed the course so you know i personally anecdotal data but when i sometimes sit in a uber or a ola the driver says are sir aap jo ride ka de rahe ho uh, company le leti hai matlab you know the platform takes 25% yeah. so if it's a 500 rupee ride one ride they will take 100 rupees right if if the driver does a business of 
i don't know 2000 rupees or 3000 rupees a day they may take up to 500 800 rupees something like that they were like really and i was quite surprised yeah. and you are saying rapido takes 20 rupees a day 30 rupees a day like that whatever yeah. I, exactly. the numbers may change a little bit how are you able to survive and how why do they charge so much and how will you survive with like such a big difference yeah i mean so this is more to do with how do we how do we build the systems how do we build the teams with the price that we charge which is like let's say we charge 30 rupees per day to a driver we made sure the costs are less i mean the biggest problem with a global companies or any other company was they made the cost very high to run the business and hence they had to charge a lot but we made sure our costs are less um and charge less to the captain and make make him earn more because that also gives the consumer experience like if you're taking a ride the cancellations the experience the customer is going through are not as per what a global standards are even though they are global companies right so i think that is that is the thing that where we try to change that if drivers are happy then generally they make the customers happy and if we can figure out a way our costs are so less that even though we charge very less we are still able to not lose money as a platform so that's it's more to do with the rigor of execution with the low cost that we have uh, and obviously it's also because we come from a bike taxi world where bike taxi the ticket sizes are very less uh, like it's a 50 to 60 rupee product and we used to uh, be profitable with that and we made sure that we pass on that benefit to a cab and auto world as well by charging less commissions okay um okay let's talk about something different from rapid but more about being a entrepreneur unicorn entrepreneur you know these days i've seen like there used to be bollywood stars who would become stars nowadays like entrepreneurs are also celebrities right a lot of them are um, okay there are shows like shark tank and all which may have triggered this but also just the idea that a 33 year old created a 9000 crore company what what happened like you know there are many and i also know that many entrepreneurs of such companies they have a active team that manage their image right i don't think you do clearly you were in the uh, back room lounge and people were like okay this is arvind he is the rapido guy and like, okay rapido is known in fact you are not even in a a b2b type company where like you know nobody even knows the company rapido is very well known but people don't know you today probably is one of the few times you are here and we are talking but there are some who are out there posting reels and putting holidays and you know they're building a brand about the company is about the face elon musk is doing that too i mean i mean with his twitter and everything and in india also that culture is there you don't do it i'm not judging anybody i mean i everybody but how do you see it what are the pros and cons of doing it not doing it yeah yeah definitely maybe uh, at least i am bit extreme that um, i don't i'm not on any social media platforms you not on you don't even have yeah like, the, an account yeah i don't um, maybe on linkedin a little bit linkedin but, uh, is okay <laughs> but not in any other social media platforms but uh, but what i think uh, but i don't think that, should, that we should be that extreme as well and uh, where there are some things where we want to tell to our consumers about how i think how a rapido as a platform things how we think what we want to do how we can change the platform so i think it's a it's a it definitely a tool if if used well uh, can have its own benefits um, and um, but at the same time definitely it's a two sided two sided uh, thing where if you don't handle it well uh, it might impact your image and that will impact the company as well which mm. is also a thing which need to be taken care of but otherwise uh, i think if used well it can be a great tool so i i mean and and um, um, full disclosure like uh, one of the big entrepreneurs of india who's a very good friend of mine who's also come on this platform in uh, not in the southern summit but in mumbai we did a abp event and he was there and um, there's a comedian on x or twitter what it was called and he just made a few tweets about the company and they got into a i, I won't go into it people can google it it's very easy to find he got into a altercation with the comedian which is also okay fine it happens that's what x is but the next day the stock price dropped 8% and that's a multi billion dollar company from a few 
tweets with a comedian who's not even like very like he's not like a he's just a comedian on X. It's not like that. What is going on there? And like what are we dealing with in this era and how should entrepreneurs position themselves to handle situations like this? Like I'm sure people, there may be, if there are 25 million rides, yeah. five guys had a very bad ride, yeah. right? In Rapido, they may say, oh my God, I got like scratched or whatever. How do you see that whole incident? Were you following that incident? You're not on social media, but. No, definitely. It's a definitely incident where uh, people forward what's happening. But I think uh, one thing as you started this conversation saying that uh, like a Bollywood star or like a celebrity, entrepreneurs are also becoming like that. I would say um, it's, it's more to do with there are a lot of people who are inspired by the journey of you or who you are, what you have done. And maybe they also want to take entrepreneurship. And that is where ideally that's what we can give back to the society thing that if we can take on incumbents, anyone can take on incumbents. Right, I think uh, that is one way where I see how why people are getting inspired by the stories of entre entrepreneurs like us, right? So I think that is I would say that is how maybe entrepreneurs has to use the platform in terms of inspiring people and getting feedback of their product and definitely hearing it to the consumers because that's a great channel to do it, right? But definitely, as I said, the impact it it can go both ways if it's not handled well. And it should be because now you are no more just an individual, you're also a face of a company, right? I think uh, if you can manage that well, then I think uh, you could can get the best out of it. Could it take away from uh, like making an image, being out there, it's job. Yeah. You know, some people do it, it's a full time job. To do that and to run a complex company, which like as a tech company with like millions of transactions happening every day, could it distract? Yeah, I mean, there is, there are ways to, where definitely maybe there are teams who can handle on what you want to say, how you want to communicate. It can still hold true with that and then still be part of that community. Uh, it's just that if you are too much into it, then again, you are taking your energy from your day to day work to something else, which might impact. Okay. So coming back to Rapido, I heard you're one of the biggest employers in India. How many people, you're not employing them like a job with a salary and offer letter. Let's just to be clear, they're like partners. But how many people are getting their livelihood because of Rapido, let's say? Yeah. So um, throughout the country, so we are operational in 100 cities throughout the country. And in the entire country, every month, 20 lakh people make money on Rapido. Um, and only in, in Hyderabad, um, four lakh people make money on our platform in a month. I think uh, that is, as I said, that is something which we are proud of. And that is something where that is the impact that we want to create on the society. And it's just not in one city we want to do throughout the country. Um, and via multiple modes of transport. Tell me something while this is really good. Is there like, I've seen people sitting at a house. I need a toothpaste, I need it in 8 minutes or 9 minutes and they order one toothpaste because they are too lazy to go down to the Kirana store which is 3 minutes away. But who will go? Someone will ring the bell and give me the toothpaste. They are ordering one toothpaste, somebody is bringing them the toothpaste within 8 minutes. I heard yesterday people are ordering in office Diwali kurtas because they realized it's traditional day. 8 minutes kurta is coming, they are wearing. Is some human being is buying that toothpaste, getting it for you, or I don't know, however that is. You're not in quick commerce, so I understand that. But is the are a lot of tech companies in India running on the basis of the massive availability, availability of cheap labor? That we have this society where there are some affluent people and there is millions and millions of people from villages, maybe farmers, families, whatever, their kids, and they are endlessly supplying labor which can deliver one toothpaste and still it kind of works the whole model I, I mean this wouldn't work many places in the world yeah I mean uh, definitely I think uh, definitely it's an unfortunate thing where uh, there are very few jobs that are available for the kind of population that we have um, but at the same time um, people are also looking for convenience uh, and that convenience has to be delivered and people are willing to pay 
um, and there are people looking out for jobs. So I think, um, according to me, if we can deliver convenience by creating employment, uh, but at the same time creating employment from an earnings point of view, we believe they need to make more than minimum wages and at the same time taking care of their social uh, welfare. If this, if you're meeting all this where they're making more than minimum wages, you are giving flexibility and they are taking care of safety, they're taking care of their health, then I think, um, yeah, this is, not a, this is not a bad thing. To How do. much could a rapido driver make? Bike, auto, car? Yeah, so um, we see, again, one of, the, uh, uh, one of the core philosophy of how we work is we want everyone to have their own flexibility on how they want to work on our platform, where they can work whenever they come, they can work, they can come anytime, they can leave anytime, um, and any number of hours in a day, etc. So on a typical bike taxi captain make around um, 80 rupees per hour, um, an auto captain make around 120 rupees to uh, cab around 150 to 160 rupees per hour. Okay, so if they work 10 hours, then 800 rupees a day as a bag driver, 1200 as an auto driver, yeah, and 1500 as a car driver. That's, so you can make, if you're driving a cab, you can make 40, 50 thousand a month. Yeah. Okay, that's that's a good, I think. Yeah. After the fuel cost. Uh, number. What policies do you think are good right now for startup entrepreneurship in India from the government, and what else can they do? Um, if you you being in the business and actually you know run, running it on, like for these fast growing tech companies, what policies direction do you think it should? Because this is kind of like a thought leadership uh, event. So sometimes you never know whose ears we might reach. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, um, one big thing what uh, as, a, as a platform we also have faced and at the same time have gone through is also every new category or every new business uh, doesn't have an existing policies when you start, right? And as you become, as you progress and as you make the business big, that's where the policies generally follow to it. So how do you work during the journey of when there is no policy, but you are creating certain business or certain impact that you are creating, maybe an employment in this angle or tra traffic congestion in our, in our side and also climate uh, impact that we are creating. So we think, uh, how do you work in this transition? So can government have maybe a separate teams, have separate policies just for you while you are, while they can handhold you while you, till you become certain extent and then maybe a policies can follow after that. So I think, um, a, traditional businesses and new businesses have to seen in a different lens. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think, uh, we are evolving in that for sure. Uh, a lot more dialogues have been open now compared to what it used to be 10 years back. It's just that maybe it can be much more faster. Okay. What impact do you think AI artificial intelligence will have on your business and, and business in general? Yeah, so in general, definitely, I think like everyone says, productivity is going to be the king. Um, and um, I mean, earlier you used to search and go through multiple articles get to get an answer. Right now it is available in the fingertip. So I think how do you leverage that and to make the decision making faster and then the process faster. So I think productivity is going to be the big thing. And even for us uh, at Rapido as well, developer productivity to call center productivity to uh, the team productivity, like we are a 600 member team. So how do we be productive? I think that is the major thing that how we are trying to use, uh, at least in transportation, we don't see beyond that uh, for now till the autonomous comes maybe. My last question is if a young person in India, young boy, young girl is watching this and they want to be entrepreneurs, they want to be at least even not a unicorn, but at least have their own startup, have a profitable company and they don't know, nobody in their family has done business before. Well, how would you get, tell them to get started? Yeah, I think uh, even when we have started, we didn't know anyone. We never know what to raise money means, uh, how to take on incumbents, everything, uh, no, uh, no history, no friends who started the companies. But I think the biggest thing is your will to start. I mean, take that step of coming out uh, of your comfort zone and then definitely ask for help. Um, I mean, I shamelessly asked help to a lot of people. I literally knocked the doors of people who can give us money, um, literally knocked the doors. 
uh, and literally went to alumni of different colleges and asked uh, asked for the help, asked for hiring, asked for money. So I think taking help and there are people who are willing to help you. It's just that they also you just need to reach out to them. Uh, so I think ask for help. Definitely, people are there to help. First, uh, take a step towards the take the first step towards coming out of your comfort zone, and you can figure out. Even our journey is like ten years. First two three years we also struggled. But now, yeah, maybe we made okay, some. Okay. Well, from that day to today, where uh, you are a big, big company known for the valuation and nine thousand crores from a first start to a, trying to gather a few crores to get a startup. It's been a long journey, but it's actually not been that long. It's just been ten years. But your name is rapid, so yeah. rapido. Thank you so much, Arvind. Thank you. Thanks, Shethan. Thank you.